Exodus, the 20th chapter, verses 1 through 17. Go ahead. And God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in the heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, Thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. Now let's go on Ecclesiastes, the 12th chapter, read verses 13 and 14. Go ahead. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. Let's go to Revelation, the 22nd chapter, verses 14 and 15. Go ahead. Blessed are they that do his commandments that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. For without are dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. So sisters and brothers, contrary to what have been taught in the churches, the commandments are still good. And if you don't keep the commandments, I'm going to give you a good warning. You're going to knock the bottom out of the lake of fire. As always, it is good to stand before you on all of God's holy day. Now, this is the observance of the Passover, sisters and brothers. This is the only feast we keep in the evening or at night is because this one must be kept in the evening. This is the way the Lord said it, and we try to do everything that the Lord say. Now, this is what, you know, what a lot of churches call the Last Supper. Some of them call, well, I think it's sacrament or something on that order. And the Catholic Church calls this your last rite. But what we're going to do is call it what it is. This is the Lord's Passover system, brother. Yes, sir. And we keep these Passover because the Lord said keep them, but there's another thing about these Passover is that when you come here, you learn what you're doing. We just don't do rituals just for the sake of doing rituals. And the Lord don't want you to uh, carry out rituals for the sake of rituals. All of God's days are teaching points, showing you how to save yourself. And that's what it's all about. Yo, we Hebrew Israelites, we teach about identity and all that stuff, but the biggest thing that we teach about is salvation, sister and brother, because that is for all of the sons and daughters of Adam. Because that's what it's about, salvation. Had Adam and Eve done the right thing in the Garden of Eden, 
God would not have needed a people to make a priest to go out and teach all the rest of the people. But we all would have been on time. But we're going to get right into this because uh, we cannot, plus like I said earlier, we cannot take the bread and the wine until the sun go down, until it's dark. <clears throat> then that's when the 14th day of the month Abib stopped. Now we're going to start in Leviticus, the 23rd chapter. Leviticus chapter 23, because people are always saying these are the Jews' feasts. These are the Jews' feasts. Well, we're going to see who these feasts really belong to, sister and brother. Leviticus chapter 23. You know, I'm feeling a little sluggish. I'm usually sleeping in front of the TV at this time of the evening. So now I'm going to have to stay awake. <laughs> Leviticus 23, and we're going to start reading at verse 1. 23 and 1. Okay, go ahead. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Go ahead. Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, uh -huh. Concerning the feast of the Lord, Go ahead. Which you shall proclaim to be holy convocations, even these are my feasts. So he said, These are the feasts of the Lord. Even you shall declare to be holy convocation. That's what this is, sister and brother. This is a holy convocation here. We're here to learn and live holy and learn about holiness. He said, so these are the feasts of the Lord. These are my feasts, he said, not the Jews. Skip down to verse 4. Verse 4 and go ahead. These are the feasts of the Lord, uh -huh. even holy convocations, uh -huh. which you shall proclaim in their seasons. Holy convocation, which you shall proclaim in their season. You cannot have the Passover every fourth Sunday. No. You can't have it every other Sunday. You can only have the Passover on the 14th day of the month, Abib, at sundown. Yes, sir. You can't have it no other time. If you have it some other time, then you are disobeying the commandments of God. So you should keep them in that season. Go ahead and read. In the 14th day of the first month at evening uh -huh. is the Lord's Passover. Now, this is what we're dealing with. In the 14th day of the month at evening is the Lord's Passover. So this is what we're dealing with tonight, sister and brother. And you know, you have people say, these are Jews Passover. Did we read Judah anywhere? Nope. He said the Lord didn't. Yes, sir. Now, everybody that said they believe in Jesus, they should be observing this Passover. I don't care what religion you call yourself. See, it's been since we went to sleep and got scattered and lost sight on self, God, and purpose, the world have tried to pick the mantle up. So they've taken this and separated this thing. They said, well, you know, Christ, the Christianity belonged to the Gentile and the Old Testament and the feast and all that stuff belonged to the Jew. But when I look in here, every book that's written in here from Genesis to Revelation was written by Israelites. Every book. And it's weird, the one that the Gentiles and the one that called the Jew, they don't look like the Israelites. Nope. Therefore, they didn't have the knowledge because God gave it to Israel and we were supposed to give it to everybody else. That's why we don't have any session where we just talk. We must teach because time is shorter than you think. Make your plain, Brother Boo. Now, we're going to go into Exodus, the 12th chapter, and we're going to pick this Passover up. Exodus, chapter 12. Because you need to know about these. If God didn't want you to know about it, it wouldn't be here. That's what all, that's what thing that always miffed me. You had this great big Bible, but you go to church, and the minister going to read the first half of the second verse, in 1 Corinthians, whatever chapter. And he's going to read that half a verse, and he's going to talk to you for an hour and a half. But you got this great big Bible. If God was a vain God, if God was a vain God, then you, 
then uh, 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 if he if if he was not a uh, if he was a vain god, you wouldn't have this book. All you need to do is talk. But he's not a vain god. No. So why do you have all of this Bible? And I'm gonna teach you a half a verse and talk to you all night. The Lord be came and gone, and you still be trying to get out of First Corinthians. <laughs> Revelation 12, and we're going to start reading at verse 1. Exodus. Uh, Exodus, I'm sorry, Exodus 12 and 1. Exodus 12 and 1. Go ahead. And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, Go ahead. This month shall be unto you the beginning of months. Go ahead. It shall be the first month of the year to you. Now, this is the first month of the year. This is the month of Abel. This is the Lord's month. This is not the Gentiles' month. Gentile months. A base, uh, 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 months of, uh, uh, lunar, uh, 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 solar, and I was a lunar. But we go with the Lord's month. Yeah. He says, so this is going to be the first month of the year to you. Go ahead and read. Speak ye unto all the congregation of Israel, uh -huh. saying, In the tenth day of this month, they shall take to them every man a lamb, uh -huh. according to the house of their fathers, a lamb for a house. Now you have to say, I want all the, uh, 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 Israel to take a lamb, a lamb according to the house. And let's see what we're going to do with this lamb. But skip down to verse 5 and continue. Your lamb shall be without blemish. It's got to be perfect. Go ahead. A male of the first year. It's got to be the firstborn. Go ahead. You shall take it out from the sheep or from the goats. Uh, and you're going to pick it out from the sheep or the goat. And you shall keep it up until the 14th day of the same month. And the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. Now you got to put it up on the tenth day. Like we see some of my brothers now are keep killing the lamb tonight. But I tell them you're doing it wrong. If you are going to kill the lamb, first thing is you got to get his mama. And the first male she have, she gotta, you got to put him up. Then you got to make sure he don't have a flaw in him. And then you put him up on the tenth day, not the ninth day. On the tenth day of the month Abib, then you sacrifice him on the fourteenth day of the month Abib, which is the ninth. Then you got to have you some blood now. Yep. Because you got to get that blood, and you got to put it on your side post and over your door post. Now, if you are in an apartment, you got your problem, don't you? But if you're going to kill the lamb, then let listen to what's in the book. Do it right. Even if you're going to do wrong, do wrong right. But we're going to show you this don't happen no more. What verse are we? We are verse 7. Go ahead and read. And they shall take of the blood. And striking on the two side posts and on the upper door posts of the houses wherein they shall eat it. Uh huh. And they shall eat the flesh in that night. Go ahead. Both with fire and unleavened bread and with bitter herb they shall eat it. Now, you're gonna get the blood, put it over your door post, then you're gonna eat it that night with unleavened bread. Why is it that you're putting the blood over the door post? Skip down to verse 10. And let's find out. Go ahead and read. And you shall let nothing of it remain until the morning. Uh -huh. And that which remained of it until the morning, you shall burn with fire. Go ahead. And thus shall you eat it with your loins girded, uh -huh. your shoes on your feet, Go ahead. and your staff in your hand. Uh -huh. And you shall eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. I mean, it's the urgency. Even nowadays, sisters and brothers, you want to, you want to find out how to save yourself with urgency. So you're going to eat it in haste. Go ahead and uh, uh, go. Uh, skip down. To, what for verse, verse 12? Go ahead and read. For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night uh -huh. and will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, uh -huh. both man and beast, and against all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. He said, I'm going to pass through Egypt this night. I'm going to kill every firstborn, a man and beast. Go ahead and read. And the blood shall be to you for a token. And the blood shall be for you for a token. A token of what? A token of your faith, sisters and brothers. Teach. Because it's always been your faith that saved you. Faith merely means belief. If you believe that the God, that God was going to do what he said, you put the blood over your doorpost. If you didn't believe it and you didn't have faith, then you didn't put yourself under the blood. Then that destroying lamb 
will get you. Finish that. And the blood shall be to you for a token uh-huh. upon the houses where you are. Go ahead. And when I see the blood. And when I see the Hebrew Israelite. When I see the blood. When I see the perfect. The blood. When I see the blood. Yes, sir. Go ahead and read. I will pass over you. Uh-huh. And the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. He said, and the blood shall be a token unto you. So when I see the blood, I'm not going to kill you. I'm going to pass over yes, sir. you. See, this is the thing we understand, sisters and brothers. All of a sudden, that took it away from Israel. That took it to all of those that have faith. What verse was that? We have verse 14 now. Go ahead and read. And this day shall be unto you for a memorial. Uh huh. And you shall keep it a feast to the Lord through you have throughout your generations. You shall keep it a feast by an ordinance forever. Now, before Jesus came, it was a feast. But it's still a feast by art. By right now, you're still a feast, but you just don't do the blood and, blood and wine, uh, bread, uh, uh, the, uh, the lamb and the bitter herbs no more. Right. But still, you have to keep it forever, sisters and brothers. Skip now to verse 21. Verse 21. And go ahead. Then Moses called for all the elders of Israel uh-huh. and said unto them, draw out and take you a lamb according to your families and kill the Passover. Go ahead. Now, that's what it is. Not the last supper. Not sacrament, not last rite, the Passover. Yes. Go ahead and read. And you shall take a bunch of hyssop uh-huh. and dip it in the blood that is in the basin. Go ahead. And strike the lintel in the two side posts uh-huh. with the blood that is in the basin. And none of you shall go out at the door of his house until the morning. Now, this is what people, you have some people that think the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread and the Passover is the same. But the uh-huh. Feast of Unleavened Bread will start at sundown tomorrow, it's the 15th. But there is a real message in this. Put the blood over the doorpost and don't come out of your house Eat. until the next morning. Lord has given you a message. Once you're under the blood, don't start breaking my commandments no more. Because if you do, it's just like walking out from under the blood in that house and you're going to get cut off. Make it plain. Because, why blood? Because God's covenant is blood covenant. Blood covenant you don't break. If you do, it is your blood that's going to spill. So I want you to stay and don't come out of your houses until morning. Now let's go into Matthew, the 26th chapter. And we're going to see the transition of this. Matthew chapter 26. Because the Lord have a message in everything that he do, sisters and brothers, not a vain God. He didn't write nothing in this book that didn't need to be written. He didn't give us nothing that we didn't have to have. It is up to us to find out about it and deliver ourselves, like Peter said, from this untoward generation. Matthew 26, and we're going to start reading that verse 1. Matthew 26 and verse 1. Okay, read it. And it came to pass. When Jesus had finished all these things, he said unto his disciples, you know that after two days is the feast of the Passover. Uh-huh. And the Son of Man is betrayed to be crucified. He said, now he told him, now you after two days is the Passover. He didn't say the last supper. Passover. He said the Son of Man is betrayed to be crucified. So he knew that he, when he was going to be killed because he is the Passover. And we're going to read that before we're out of here. But go ahead and read. Verse 3. Then assembled together the chief priests and the scribes and the elders of the people Uh until the palace of the high priest who was called Caiaphas. Go ahead. And consulted that they might take Jesus by subtlety and kill him. So now the priest was plotting on him. Ain't this something? He is the savior, but the the head of the religious order was plotting against him. It wasn't the street guy. It wasn't the dope dealer. You understand? It wasn't the thug on the street. It was the ministers. And look what they said. Go ahead and read. But they said, not on the feast day, Uh lest there be an uproar among the people. But not on the feast day, unless there be an uproar among the people. What feast day? That's tomorrow at sundown. The first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Yes. 
They didn't know that they was following what God had them to do. They had to kill him on the 14th day. But they said, not on the feast day. It's just like people, when we're looking at what's going on with Russia and, and uh, uh, Ukraine. Yeah. He oh boy, walked three. Look, God said he got, he got four angels that's got this thing under control. Russia going to do what Russia going to do, then Russia going to cool out, and then Russia going to go back to his place until they build a temple Make in play. Jerusalem. Then the West is going to jump Russia. And you know what we're going to be doing? We're going to be in the wilderness looking at it. <laughs> So we know what's going on, sister and brother, because the Lord has revealed it all in this book. So now, they say, we can't kill him on the feast day unless the people have an uproar. So they had to wait until the time appointed. Skip down to verse 17. Verse 17, go ahead. Now the feast of the, now the first day of the feast of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus saying unto him, uh -huh. What wilt thou that we prepare for thee to eat the Passover? Now, when people read this, sisters and brothers, they say, see, the uh, Passover and the Feast of Unleavened Bread is on the same day. According to the 23rd chapter of Leviticus, the Passover is on the 14th day. Yes. And the Unleavened Bread is on the 15th day. So it's obvious that somebody wrote, up, wrote this in a manner it shouldn't have been. The prophet been and said, in the days of the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Yes. Because it cannot go beyond what the Lord tell it. So we got two days. Tomorrow, when the sun go down tomorrow, that'll be the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread. But he said, anyway, why should we eat the Passover? What verse? We have verse 18. Go ahead. And he said, go into the city to such a man uh -huh. and say unto him, the master said, uh -huh. my time is at hand. Uh -huh. I will keep the Passover at thy house with my disciples. You know, I have to really struggle to keep from talking behind every verse. But I see the wisdom that the people have. Yes. He said, go and tell a man that I'm going to keep the Passover at your house. My time is at hand. And whoever he was talking to has some understanding. You'd be surprised if you just keep your eyes open and look and see. Yeah. I mean, there's a message behind every message. This Bible is much bigger than it looks. But go ahead and read. Verse 19. And the disciples did as Jesus had appointed them, and they made ready the Passover. And they made ready the Passover. They made ready the Passover, yes, sir. sisters and brothers, not the communion. Go ahead and read. Now when the evening was come, he sat down with the twelve. Now when the evening was come, remember you had to can't kill it until that evening. Passover don't start until the day, until the 14th day. So when the evening came, he sat down. Now skip now to verse 26 because he changed something here. Verse 26. And go ahead. And as they were eating, uh -huh. Jesus took bread and blessed it. Go ahead. And break it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. That's when he changed the operation of the Passover. He didn't change the Passover. He just changed the ordinance of it. He said, take, eat, this is my body. Go ahead and read. And he took the cup and gave thanks and uh -huh. gave it to them, saying, drink ye all of it. Go ahead. For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shared for many for the remission of sins. Does the New Testament mean new covenant, sisters and brothers? Yes, sir. This is what people don't understand. When you see this, talking about covenant. So this is the blood of the new covenant. What are you going to say it for the remission of sin? Go ahead and read. But I say unto you, uh -huh. I would not drink henceforth of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. Wait a minute. You mean he ain't going to have a Passover no more until he do it again in his Father's kingdom? Yeah. Wait a minute. Jesus is going to be on this earth and he's going to rule it a thousand years. You mean a thousand years he ain't going to have a Passover? No. You know why? Because the Passover started with his blood. And he will and it will not be complete until he have sat down and had the white throne judgment 
And then he going to turn the kingdom over to the father. Yes, sir. Then he going to have it in his father's kingdom. You know why? Because it'll be complete then. Won't be nobody else left to pass over because everybody Eat. will be immortal. Y'all understand? Like I said, Jesus don't make no loose statement, sisters and brothers. But he broke out the bread and the wine. Why did he break out the bread and wine? They didn't do that since Israel was a nation. Big secret, sister and brother. Jesus loaned his kingsmanship to David, and he loaned his priesthood to Levi. Make it plain. So now, when he got ready to pick his priesthood back up again, he picked up his old tools again. Let's go and see what his old tools Teach. are. Let's go to Genesis, the 14th chapter. Genesis chapter 14. Solomon told you there ain't nothing new under the sun. Somebody come when I did something new, somebody come along and say, hey, that's been done before. Genesis chapter 14. That's what I like about this word, sister and brother. It keep you engaged. Yes. 54 years I have been engaged just like I was engaged in this word like I was the first day that the Lord opened my eye. Yes, sir. There ain't many things that keep you excited, but this word have kept me excited for 54 years. 54. Praise God. That's older than a lot of you. Y'all been on this earth. Because of the wisdom of this word, sister and brother. Genesis 14. And this is the days of Abraham and, this, and Sodom and Gomorrah. You're going to look at another part of Sodom and Gomorrah. Verse 14. Go ahead. Uh, verse 1, brother. Go ahead. Chapter and, 14 and verse 1. Go ahead. And it came to pass in the days of Amraphel, king of Shinar, and Ariok, king of Elisar, uh -huh. Shadalamir, king of Elam, and Tadal, king of nations. Go ahead. That these made war with Bera, king of Sodom, and with Bersha, king of Gomorrah, Shadab, Shadab king of Adar, Adma, and Shemab, king of Zeboim, uh -huh. and the king of Bela, which is Zoar. Go ahead. All these were joined together in the vale of Shittim, which is the salt sea. So now, these kings, Sodom and Gomorrah, and their allies, was paying tribute to this one king, and they stopped paying tribute so now he come down there and he attacked him. Skip down to verse 10 and let's see what happened. Verse 10 and go ahead. And the veil of Sodom was full of slime pits. Uh-huh. And the kings of Sodom and Gomorrah fled and fell there. They were full of slime pits. I guess them kings of Sodom and Gomorrah, they couldn't deal with that stuff. I guess it was too slimy. <laughs> so they ran. And they failed. They didn't get killed now, but go ahead and read. And they that remained fled to the mountains. Uh-huh. And they took all the goods of Sodom and Gomorrah and all their victuals and went their way. Now they took all, so them kings took all of the goods of Sodom and Gomorrah, and they even took the people of Sodom and Gomorrah. But they made a big mistake. Yeah. Go ahead and read. And they took Lot, Abram's brother's son. That was their mistake. They took Abraham's nephew. They should have left him now. They'd have got away with it. Yeah. But they took Lot. Go ahead and read. Who dwelt in Sodom and his goods and departed. Uh-huh. And there came one, of, one that had escaped and told Abram, the Hebrew, for he dwelt in the plain of Mamre, the Amorite, brother of Eschol, the brother of Aner, and these were confederate with Abram. So now he went and told Abram, the Hebrew. That's why we are Hebrews, sisters and brothers. So he went and told him, and let's see what happened. Go ahead. 14. And when Abram heard that his brother was taken captive, he armed his trained servants, born in his own house, 318, and pursued them unto Dan. Go ahead. And he divided himself against them, he and his servants, by night, and smote them, and pursued them unto Hobah, which is on the left hand of Damascus. Uh-huh. And he brought back all the goods, and also brought again his brother Lot, and his goods, and the women also, and the people. Now, so Abram, he hadn't changed him to Abraham yet. He caught all, he, he did what four kings couldn't do. He yeah. knocked off these guys. 
And he brought all the people back, brought all the goods back. Yes. Go ahead and read. And the king of Sodom went out to meet him after his return from the slaughter of Sodom and Gomorrah, uh -huh. and of the kings that were with him uh -huh. at the valley of Sheba, which is in the Kingsdale. So they had this place that's called the Kingsdale. So yes. all the kings, they went out and they met him. But another king showed up. Go ahead. And Melchizedek. And Melchizedek. King of Salem uh -huh. brought forth bread and wine. Uh -huh. And he was the priest of the Most High God. Wait a minute. This Melchizedek, he didn't come and kill the fatted calf. Nope. He simply brought forth bread and wine. And he was the priest of the Most High God. Go ahead and read. And he blessed them and said, Blessed be Abram of the Most High God, Go ahead. possessor of heaven and earth. Uh huh. And blessed be the Most High God, which hath delivered thine enemies into thy hand. Uh huh. And he gave him tithes of all. Wait a minute, Abraham knew who this guy was. He even paid tithes to this yeah, guy. Yeah, he did. But he must right. have been a, been a pretty poor king. He couldn't kill the fatted calf and a few bulls. <laughs> he gonna show up with just bread and wine. Sisters and brothers, Jesus and this guy is the same. Let's go into Hebrews, the seventh chapter. Hebrews chapter seven. I remember a long time ago, we had brother, you know, he was a, a, a brother, Yahtzee, he's a Hebrew Israelite. Yeah. He used to have a paper stand down there on 35th and State, right next to that L station. And all us Hebrews would go down there and we'd be arguing with one another. And I had this one Hebrew who called himself Ben Levy, the son of Levi. He going to kick against Jesus. Yeah, and he broke out that old bread and wine. So he did. Well, yeah, man. And stop killing the lamb. We ain't going with that. I said, hey, man. I said, he picked up his old tools. And I took him back and showed him where he said. He looked at that. And he took note. I said, you're supposed to know that. You're the son of Levi. <laughs> that is right. That's right. Jesus didn't start nothing new, sisters and brothers. He picked up something very old. Very old. Even for, before Abram had, had changed his name to Abraham. Right. Before Abram had his first child, Ishmael, or his second kind, Isaac. So that's why you have to know what you're looking at. A lot of people kicking on stuff and don't know why they're kicking on. You think, well, we're going to do it the old way. We're going to kill the lamb. I said, that ain't the old way, brother. That's the new way. The old way is the bread and wine. Hebrews chapter 7, we're going to start reading at verse 1. We're going to, uh, verse 1. We're going to look at this guy, Melchizedek. Hebrews 7 and verse 1. Okay, go ahead and read. For this Melchizedek, king of Salem, uh -huh. priest of the Most High God. He didn't say one of the priests, didn't he? Priest of the Most High. He was all of it. Go ahead. Who met Abraham returning from the slaughter of the kings and blessed him. And he blessed him. Go ahead and read. To whom also Abraham gave a tenth part of all. So the next time some brother tell you, hey, look, look, you can't cut no uh, collect tithe because the Levites is the one that the Lord chose to collect tithe. Ask him, what was Levi in Abraham and Melchizedek's day? They didn't exist. Didn't exist. So he paid him tithes of all. Go ahead and read. To whom also Abraham gave a tenth part of all, first being by interpretation king of righteousness, uh -huh. and after that also king of Salem, which is king of peace. How many kings of righteousness and kings of peace do we have? One. One. Go ahead and read. Without father. Uh-huh. Without mother. Go ahead. Without descent. Uh-huh. Having neither beginning of days, nor end of life. Go ahead. But made like unto the Son of God. Uh huh. About the priest continually. He had no mother, no father, no beginning of days or end of life. That's why I tell people, well, you know, he died when he came in the flesh. I said, he didn't come out of Mary, he just came through Mary. Ooh. And when you understand death, it is merely an interruption in life. He ain't doing nothing but taking a nap. Make your plan. You should get in your Bible and you use the word death. And use the word sleep, and I guarantee you, you'll find the word sleep in there more than you do death. Because death is merely an interruption of life. That's why he said, I am the God of Abraham, 
the God of Isaac, uh -huh. and the God of Jacob. Yes, I am sir. the God of the living, not the dead. Because God created you to live forever, and you will. But you got to decide where you're going to live forever that at. That is right. I always have to put that little backhand on you so you won't get too sure of yourself and get cut off. <laughs> what verse are we? We have verse 4. Go ahead and read. Now consider how great this man was. Uh-huh. Unto whom even the patriarch Abraham gave the tenth of the spoils. Now look. He said that his... He abided a priest forever. Yeah. That's why I say he loaned his priesthood to Levi. The only way to get out of being priest again is to die. Yes. So now, consider how great this guy was. Even Abraham paid a fifth tithe to him. Go ahead and read. And verily, they that are of the sons of Levi, uh -huh. who received the office of the priesthood, Go ahead. have a commandment to take tithes of the people according to the law. Uh -huh. That is, of their brethren, though they come out of the loins of Abraham. So now they paid tithes to Melchizedek because they had been born yet. But they paid tithes through the law because they were still in the loins of Abraham, sister and brother. But skip now to verse 9 and go ahead. And as I may say, so Levi also, who received tithes, paid tithes in Abraham. Uh huh. For he was yet in the loins of his father when Melchizedek met him. So the tithe collector paid the first tithe in his father. Go right. ahead and read. If therefore perfection were by the Levitical priesthood, for under it the people received the law. Uh huh. What further need was there that another priest should rise after the order of Melchizedek and not be called after the order of Aaron? So he said, well, you know, if, if, if the priesthood of Levi would have been good, then you would have kept the Levite, the priesthood of Levi. They said, from which they received the law. People think they're talking about the commandment. No, they didn't least, uh, 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 receive the commandments under Levi. The commandment was received in the days of Adam. You know why? Because when Cain killed Abel, God asked Cain, why is your brother Abel? Yeah. I don't know. Am I my brother's keeper? If God hadn't told him, thou shall not kill, he'd have said, oh, I killed him and threw him in the, in, on, in the field over there. So what? But he lied. Oh, the law was always here. You know why? Because God found iniquity in Satan and never before man's time. Make your play. So this law that he's talking about is not talking about the command. The command. He's talking about the law of animal sacrifices yes. for sin. What verse are we? We have verse 12. Go ahead and read. For the priesthood being changed, there is made of necessity a change also of the law. So now, that was a law also that you could not be a priest lest you came out of Levi. And anybody that was not in the tribe of Levi got up and said they was a priest. The book said they shall be put to death. But being that there was going to be a change in the priesthood, right. there had to be a change in the law. Why? Go ahead and read. For he of whom these things are spoken pertaining to another tribe uh -huh. of which no man gave attendance at the altar. So what tribe was that? Go ahead. For it is evident that our Lord sprang out of Judah, uh -huh. of which tribe Moses spake nothing concerning priesthood. So now Jesus came out, out of the tribe of Judah. He came through Judah. So they had to change the law of the priesthood in order to make him a legitimate priest. And he changed it. So when Jesus came, he changed two laws. Yes. The law of animal sacrifice yes. for sin and the law of the priesthood. Yes, sir. Because he came by way of Judah. Go ahead and read. And it is yet far more evident uh -huh. that after the similitude of Melchizedek, there ariseth another priest. Go ahead. Who is made not after the law of carnal commandment, but after the power of an endless life. Now, you have to be after the power of endless life. If you're going to come out to the order of Melchizedek, sister and brother. Yes, sir. Go ahead and read. For he testified, thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. That's why Melchizedek and Jesus are the same. Yes. Go ahead and read. 
For there is verily a disannulment of the commandment going before for the weakness and unprofitable, the unprofitable thereof. Go ahead. For the law made nothing perfect. No, it didn't. Go ahead. But the bringing in of a better hope did. Uh huh. By the which we draw near unto God. Go ahead. And inasmuch as not without an oath, he was made priest. Go ahead. For those priests were made without an oath. But this with an oath by him that said unto him, the Lord swear and will not repent. Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. See, he didn't swear when he made Levi. He swore Teach. when he made Melchizedek. On your own, you can run in the 110th chapter Psalms and yes. tell you that. Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Go ahead and read. By so much was Jesus made a surety of a better testament. Go ahead. And they truly were many priests uh -huh. because they were not suffered to continue by reason of death. So now, why wasn't a whole lot of Levitical priesthood priests? Because they died, yes. sisters and brothers. That's why everybody was shocked when this Pope died. Don't you know that the Catholic Church priesthood is set up on the order of Levi? Yes, that is right. And he is supposed to be the high priest until he died. You get these old guys, he's so old, he don't even know why he hails half the time. But still he is priest. Get to talking and they think he's pausing because he's uh, being dramatic. No, he's forgetting what he's about to say. <laughs> Why don't they remove him? Because the law of the priesthood is that you got to die out of office. That is right. So that's why there was many priests in Levi by reason of death. But go ahead and read. Verse 24. But this man, because he continued ever, has an unchangeable priesthood. Go ahead. Wherefore, he is able also to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him, seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them. So because the keys that live forever, just like Jesus, there ain't no change in it as priesthood. He just gave it up for a minute, yeah. and he picked it back up. So when he got ready to do his thing, he needed bread and wine, bread and wine, because ain't no animal, ain't nobody else gonna die for your sin, sister and brother. That's why he broke it out. Now let's go in 110 chapter Psalm. Psalm 110. Because people don't even understand Jesus' longevity, sister and brother. This guy been around. Forever. Forever. Psalm 110. And we're going to read verse 1 and we're going to skip now. Psalms 110 chapter. Psalms 110 chapter. Verse 1. Read it. The Lord said unto my Lord, uh -huh. sit thou at my right hand until I make thy enemies thy footstool. Now this is actually... This was fulfilled after the resurrection of Jesus. But what else did he say? Skip down to verse 4 and read it. The Lord has sworn and will not repent. Uh -huh. Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. So that is the oath that was made. The Lord has sworn and he will not repent or change his mind. Thou art a priest forever yes. after the order of Melchizedek. So Jesus was being a priest for a long time, sisters and brothers, a long time. But in order for, just like all priests, sisters and brothers, he had to make a sacrifice. So we're going to show you the old priesthood and the old law couldn't save you. Let's go into Hebrews, the 10th chapter. That's why we tell people, you know, when you come here, bring pencil, paper. You know your Bible, pencil, paper, and patience. But we're going to teach you something here. If it ain't no more than just to teach you not to come back, if you ain't got no patience to learn nothing. So how are you going to tell somebody to work out their own salvation and they don't know how? Hebrews 10 and 1. 
Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 1. Go ahead and read. For the law, having a shadow of good things to come, uh -huh. and not the very image of the things. Now see, you get one of them Sunday preachers, he'll stop you right there. Yep. You see, this law ain't no good, see. It's just a shadow of good things to come. But you're supposed to say, keep reading, mister. Go ahead. And not the very image of the thing uh -huh. can never with those sacrifices which they offer year by year continually make the commas they are too perfect. So this is the law of animal sacrifice, isn't it? This is not the commandment sister and brother. Got preachers all over the world talking about the law is nailed to the cross. He nailed the commandments to the cross. No, he nailed the law of animal sacrifice to the cross. Yes, sir. He said, because it could never make the commas thereof perfect. And that's another lesson, but we ain't going to get into it tonight. Why? Skip down to verse 4. Verse 4 and go ahead. For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats uh -huh. didn't take away sin. So it wasn't possible. Blood and bulls and goats didn't sin against God. Man did. Yes. So it's not possible that the blood of bulls and goats can take away sin. Go ahead and read. Wherefore, when he cometh into the world, uh -huh. he said, sacrifice and offering thou would is not. He said, sacrifice and, off sacrifice and offering you would is not. In other words, you didn't want. So what you, what, what's got to happen? Go ahead. But a body has thou prepared me. But a body has thou prepared me. Sisters and brothers, Jesus was God, a spirit being. He couldn't die. So if he had to come and die, he had to have him a flesh and blood that body. That is right. That's right. So a body was prepared for him by the Father. And which I'm going to really get on that on the first of the month. Because I put together a lesson for, you know, this guy I like to debate people, Gino, Jenny. I'm going to take him to school. Ooh. Because I looked at what he said, and it upset me. And when I get upset, somebody going to hear about it. So he said, a body has thou prepared me. So let's go, let's back up to Hebrews, the second chapter, and pursue this, sisters and brothers. Hebrews chapter 2. Because I used to beat up Frazier and Clay Evans all the time until they got tired and stopped messing with me. <laughs> Because the one thing I'll do, I will read this book on you. And when you get some understanding, you'll find out when you read this book on somebody, right. they don't want to mess with you. That is right. Because now they ain't fighting against you. They're fighting against God. He's the one that dictated this book. So Jesus is sacrificing often. You didn't like, so you prepared me a body. Skip down to verse, I mean, to start at verse 9. Hebrews 2 and verse 9. Go ahead and read. But we see Jesus who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death. So why was he made a little lower? For the suffering, for of, the death. suffering of death. Go ahead and read. Crowned with glory and honor uh -huh. that he, by the grace of God, should taste death for every man. So what he's going to do is he's going to come and he's going to die for every man. Anybody that have belief and put themselves under the blood, yes. just like the people was under the blood of the lamb in Egypt, going to get saved. You know, that is so simple. That's what I like about the word of God. It's yes. simple. Why are you laying down? Why are the people walking on me? What can I do to stop them from walking on me? Get up. That's simple, ain't it? That's the way it is with the word of God. Go ahead and read. Verse 10. For it became him for whom are all things and by whom are all things. Pay attention. It became him for whom are all things and by whom all. What you mean by? Because he's the one that created everything. The yes, Father just gave yes. him the commandment. Go ahead and read. In bringing many sons into glory. Go ahead. To make the captain of their salvation perfect through suffering. Go ahead. For both he that sanctified and they who are sanctified are all of one. Go ahead. For which cause he is not ashamed to call them brethren. Go ahead. Saying, I will declare thy name unto my brethren. In the midst of the church will I sing praise unto thee. So it wasn't shame to call them brother. Skip down to verse 14 and read it. For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, uh -huh. he also became likewise 
took part of the same that through death he might destroy him that had power of death, that is the devil. So now the children were plush and blood, so he took part in the same. That's letting you know that the Lord was already around. But he said the father prepared this body for him, he took this body over. Yes. Where did he get it from? Skip down to verse 16. Verse 16 and go ahead. For verily, he took not on him the nature of angels, but he took on him the seed of Abraham. So he didn't take on him the nature of angels because angels can't die. Right. So he took on him the seed of Abraham. You know the Abraham that he met when he come, when he's under his name Melchizedek? Why did he take on his seed? Let's investigate. Let's go into Genesis, the 22nd chapter. So that body that was made for him, it was made out of the seed of Abraham. And Jesus just took it over. The angel grabbed it and took it and planted it into the woman. Brother Boy, that don't make sense. I said, make better sense than them digging some dirt up and making us out of it. That's the big feet there. But we some small dirt, ain't we? We even can doctor on ourselves. If he can make a being like us out of dirt, what's too, too hard for him? Nothing. Nothing, Nothing, sisters and brothers. That's why I tell people, don't try to reason with God. You just do what he said. Like I was telling the sisters in the office uh, 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 yesterday when they was talking about, you know, brothers try to reason the word, I said, brother, reason. I said, I don't reason. I just read it and take it. I said, I take that old military uh, uh, addict that we had when I was in the military. And this word, it is not yours to ask the reason why. Right. It is yours to do <laughs> or die. Right. I don't ask why God did what he did or why he said what he said. I just read it and do it. Because it don't, if I don't, I'm going to die. Right. Even a second death. I'm scared of that one. Genesis chapter 22. And we're going to start reading that verse 1. Genesis chapter 22 and verse 1. Because Jesus took up on him the seed of Abraham. And what, you don't, what people don't understand, the Lord don't make no loose statements. He do not make any vain move. Everything he do is plotted out. 22 and 1. Go ahead and read. And it came to pass after these things that God did tempt Abraham uh -huh. and said unto him, Abraham. And he said, Behold, here I am. Go ahead. And he said, Take now thy son, thine only son Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah. Go ahead. And offer him therefore a burnt offering upon one of the mountains, which I will tell thee of. See, look, why? Look, Abraham is the father of Ishmael, which is the father of Isaac. So Isaac wasn't his only physical son, but Isaac was the son of the covenant. Yes. Y'all understand? This is what people don't understand. If you don't are not a part of the covenant, God don't know you. It's all that simple. So he said, now take your son Isaac, your only son, and take him down there and sacrifice him. Skip down to verse 9. Let's see what Abraham did. He didn't miss words. He didn't ask the Lord the reason why. He just did it. Well, he was going to do it. Verse 9, go ahead. And they came to the place which God had told them of. Uh -huh. And Abraham built an altar there and laid the wood in order, and bound Isaac his son, and laid him on the altar upon the wood. Go ahead. And Abraham stretched forth his hand, and took the knife to slay his son. Uh-huh. And Now Abraham was going to kill him. Made him an altar of wood, laid him up on it, got the knife, getting ready to kill him. But what happened? Go ahead and read. And the angel of the Lord called unto him out of heaven, and said, Abraham, uh -huh. Abraham. Go ahead. And he said, here am I. Go ahead. And he said, lay not thine hand upon the lad. He had to stop him. But this is what really got my interest. It caught my attention. Go ahead and read. Neither do thou anything unto him. Uh -huh. But now I know that thou fearest God, seeing thou hast not withheld thy son, thine only son from me. He said, but don't do nothing to him. So now I know. That you fear God. Maybe the Lord might give you a little test. 
Well, you know, brother boy, you know, the Lord know everything according to, he didn't, according to this. He didn't know that, did he? Now he didn't I know, know what Abraham was going to do, did he? Otherwise, he wouldn't have said, now I know. You think God make loose statements? Uh-uh. Maybe he's going to run something by you that you shouldn't do concerning this law. You back away from him. Uh-uh, I ain't going to do that. And God said, he might not hear me. He said, no, nah, I know he's going to serve me. It's because you did not withhold your son, your only son, because there was the son of the covenant. Now skip now to verse 15. Verse 15 and go ahead. And the angel of the Lord called unto Abraham out of heaven the second time. Go ahead. And said, by myself have I sworn, saith the Lord. Go ahead. For because thou hast done this thing and hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, that in blessing I will bless thee. Go ahead. And in multiplying, I will multiply thy seed as the stars of heaven and as the sand which is upon the seashore, and thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemies. And that's going to happen. It did in a minute in David's and Solomon's time, but it's going to happen again. But then he got another seed that's bigger than the seed of Israel. Read the next verse. Go ahead and read. And in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed, because thou hast obeyed my voice. He said, and in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. Yes. Because you have very obeyed my voice. Is this talking about Israel? No, let's go and show you who it's talking about. Let's go into Galatians, the third chapter. Each. Galatians, the third chapter. So you will understand how important this night is, sister and brother. This is an important night. Because this night is the night that God lifts a, an eternal death sentence up off you. Galatians, the third chapter. We're going to start reading at verse 15. Galatians 3 and 15. Galatians 3 and 15. Because the Lord had all this stuff. The Lord is the dictator, sister and brother. He dictated to all of these apostles and these prophets. Because he wants you to know what he was doing. Verse 15. Go ahead. Brethren, I speak after the manner of men. Though it be but a man's covenant, yet if it be confirmed, no man disannul it or add it thereto. He's not... I'm speaking to you as the matter of a man, though it be a man covenant, can't nobody annul it, or you can't add it to, add to it. So once the covenant has been confirmed, it is etched in stone. Go ahead and read. Now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. Go ahead. He said not and to seeds as of many, but as of one. He said to Abraham and his seed as a singular was the promise made. Not as to many, but as one. And who is that? Go ahead. And to thy seed, which is Christ. Also, this is the seed he was talking about. Yes. That in thy seed shall all of the nations of the earth be blessed. Go ahead and read. And this I say, uh -huh. that the covenant that was confirmed before of God in Christ, uh -huh. the law, which was 430 years after, cannot disannul that it should make the promise of none effect. So the covenant. That God had made with Abraham and confirmed in Jesus the law. What law? The law of animal sacrifice, which came 330 years later. Can't annul it. What do you mean 330 years later? Because they did not deal with animal sacrifice until they left Egypt and they was down in the Egypt for 330 years. Oh. Y'all understand? Then when they got in the wilderness, they come up with the animal sacrifice because man didn't listen to God and started breaking his law. So the Lord had to kill animals to keep from killing man. Yes. Skip down to verse 21 and go ahead. Is the law then against the promises of God? Uh-huh. God forbid. So is there even the animal sacrifice against the promise of God? And God forbid, but this law, but this law had a flaw. Go ahead and read. For if there had been a law given which could have given life, verily righteousness should have been by the law. See, but this law couldn't give life. It couldn't raise nobody from the dead physically, and it couldn't raise you from the dead to live forever. 
Go ahead and read. But the scripture has concluded all under sin uh -huh. that the promise by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. Go ahead. But before faith came, we were kept under the law. Shut up until the faith which should afterwards be revealed. He said, look, this law wasn't against the promise of God, uh -huh. but it couldn't give light. So what happened was we was kept under this law until Jesus came and we would believe in him. That's what's talking about faith came. If you read this, you think faith was a person. But before faith came, uh -huh. faith came, you keep watching the door. Why you watching the door, brother? Boo? I'm looking for faith to walk in. Before you start believing in the Lord, you was kept under the law of animal sacrifice. Why? Because if you didn't believe in him, you're going to sin against him. And the wages of sin is death. That's why when somebody sinned, somebody had to die. Even in the Garden of Eden, before Adam and Eve died, Eve died they, God made them skins of coat. Where do you think they got the skin, aprons of skin? Where do you think they got the skin from? I just went out and killed some poor animal. So, sisters and brothers, so you are kept under the law. Read that 23rd verse again. Go ahead. But before faith came, we were kept under the law, shut up until the faith which should afterwards be revealed. So we were shut up until the Lord came and died that we, so we could believe in him. Yes. Now let's go back to Hebrews, the 10th chapter. Back to Hebrews, the 10th chapter. So the Lord had us killing animals because we figure if you keep killing your animals, you can go broke. So maybe you slow down and stop seeing it. But that was only until the Lord showed up. Hebrews 10, because he said, remember, a body has thou prepared me. So we're going to start at verse 6. Verse 6. Hebrews 10 and verse 6. Okay, go ahead. And burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin, thou hast had no pleasure. He didn't have no pleasure because they couldn't remove sin. Go ahead and read. Then said I, lo, I come in the volume of the book. Uh -huh. It is written of me to do thy will, O God. That's why I can't understand why my brothers don't, act, don't recognize who Jesus is. He said, I come in the volume of the book. What are you talking about? Because the book is written by, about him. Who is the woman's seed? When it come to eat, it's going to be enmity between the serpent seed and the woman seed. Don't no woman have no seed. What is the only woman that had a seed, sisters and brothers? Mary. Each. Each. Moses said, a prophet, shall the Lord thy God raise up from, from among thy brethren like unto me. Him you shall hear. And everybody that don't hear that prophet is going to be cut off. So all of the prophets wrote about him from Moses to John the Baptist. Yes, sir. But go ahead and read. What verse? I read verse 7 again. Uh-huh. Then said I, lo, I come in the volume of the book it is written of me to do thy will, O God. Go ahead. Above when he said, sacrifice and offerings and burnt offerings and offering for sin thou wouldest not. Go ahead. Neither had pleasure therein, uh -huh. which are offered by the law. He said you didn't have pleasure in it because they was offered by the law that couldn't remove sin. Go ahead and read. Then said he, uh -huh. lo, I come to do thy will, O God. He taketh away the first that he may establish the second. He says, so I come to do your will, O God. He taketh away the first. First what? The first covenant yes. that he might establish the second covenant. And we have people talking about, well, uh, uh, how much of the covenant we under? All of it. All of it. Jesus didn't half die. Go ahead and read. <laughs> By the which we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. For by the which will are we sanctified by the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once and for all. That's why he needed a body. Yes. Remember for the suffering of death. God, the Father, could only be appeased 
by blood. So the blood of bulls and goats couldn't handle it. Man had to handle it. And he tell you in Isaiah, he looked down over the whole life and couldn't find one man that could stand Nobody. Everybody had a flaw. So much for holiness. So Jesus said, hey, I got to get up and take care of this business. He was God that became man. So we are sanctified by the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once and for all. Isaiah told you about this. Let's go into Isaiah, the 53rd chapter. Isaiah chapter 53. So when you take that bread and wine, you're going to know exactly what you're taking it for. That is right. We don't like mysteries, sister and brother. Always talking about the mystery of Christ. Ain't no mystery in Christ. He tell it every time. You just haven't read about it. You don't want to be mysterious. He wants you to know what's going on. Isaiah 53. And when we start reading, you're going to recognize this person. Isaiah 53, and we're going to start reading at verse 1. Isaiah 53 and verse 1. Okay, go ahead. Who has believed our report? Uh Uh-huh. And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? Go ahead. For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant. Uh Uh-huh. And as a root out of a dry ground. He has no form nor kindness. And when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He said, whoever believed our report, not many people. And he came, he's going to grow up as a tender plant, and he ain't going to be desired. He didn't come to win no beauty contest. Go ahead and read. He is despised and rejected of men. Sure is, even to this day. Hebrews hate him. Gentiles lie on him. Go ahead and read. A man of sorrows Uh and acquainted with grief. Go ahead. And we hid as if it were our faces from him. Go ahead. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Uh Uh-huh. Surely he had borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Go ahead. Yet we did esteem him stricken, Uh smitten of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. So who are we talking to here? Jesus. This is Jesus. It wasn't Isaiah. That's why he said, he come in the volume of the book. Yes. Read the next verse. Go ahead. Oh, we like sheep have gone astray. Go ahead. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. All of us have gone to sleep. We read earlier. That we've all fallen short. Yeah. So everybody is dirty. So the Lord have laid up on Jesus the sins of us all. Yes. And by doing what? By making a sacrifice. Skip down to verse 10 and read it. Go ahead. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He has put him to grief when thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin. And 10 chapter he said he made his body an offer for sin. Yes. But here he said shall make his soul an offer for sin. Somebody got something wrong now. No, they want. Because the Lord said he formed man out of the dust of the ground yeah. and breathed into his nostrils the blood and the breath of life, yeah. and man became a living soul. Jeez. The body and the soul is one and the same. It is not like this guy who I'm going to whoop up on the first of the month. Going to go in the apocryphal saying Adam was created without a soul. What? And then let me know who wrote the Apocrypha. Because I saw an uh, Edomite rabbi said, see, Adam was made without the soul. So uh-huh. there was a fully developed soul in heaven <laughs> and he came and took over the body. <laughs> I like to fell out of the chair. That's why I read and watch everything. Uh-huh. Because if you're going to go to war, you have to know the kind of weapons that your enemy has. So he made his soul an offering for sin. Finish that verse. He shall see his seed. Uh huh. He shall prolong his days. Go ahead. And the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. Now, that means he's going to raise from the dead and he's going to finish his work. But let's go into Matthew and see that happen. Let's go into Matthew, the 27th chapter. Matthew chapter 27. 
That's why I watch, I watch sisters and brothers to see who going to do this thing right. Because I'm going to teach it right. You come here, you're going to learn, uh, learn what right is. Now, whether you want it or not is up to you. Whether you like it or not is up to you. I don't care. <laughs> Tell it like it is, man. I'm trying to get me some salvation. Matthew 27, and we're going to start at verse 35. Matthew 27 and verse 35. 27 and 35. Okay, go ahead. And they crucified him and parted his garments, casting lots that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet. They parted my garments among them, and upon my vesture did they cast lots. So that's when they crucified him. That fulfilled prophecy. That's written in prophecy. That's in, a, that's in the 22nd Psalm, but then that's another lesson. Skip down to verse 46. And go ahead. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabbatani. That is to say, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Well, that flesh kicked in when he was in pain, sisters and brothers, because he knew he had to die. But skip down to verse 50. Verse 50 and go ahead. Jesus, when he had cried again with a loud voice, yielded up the ghost. Uh-huh. And behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twain from the top to the bottom, and the earth did quake, and the rocks rent. Wait a minute now. When he died on the cross, the veil of the temple ripped from top to bottom. What took place there, sister and brother? No more animals. That end in animal sacrifice? Yes, sir. So when he died, the veil just ripped. Now, let's go and show you in Leviticus, the fourth chapter, and we're going to show you what happened before this veil. Leviticus chapter 4. Leviticus chapter 4. Teach. Teach the book. Because the Lord have it here, and he want us to know this, sisters and brothers. If he didn't want us to know it, it wouldn't be here. He ain't no vain God. And so if it's here, that means that you needed to get you some salvation. People read that, if the people that read, they don't even know what happened because you don't pursue it. Four and one, go ahead and read. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, If a soul shall sin through ignorance against any of the commandments of the Lord concerning things which ought not to be done, uh -huh. and shall do against any of them. Now, is it through ignorance? God ain't never had no way out for a person that sinned on purpose. The ones that sin and intend to do it. But go ahead and read. If the priest that is anointed do sin according to the sin of the people, then let him bring for his go, sin. Go ahead. Which he has sinned, a young bullock without blemish unto the Lord for a sin offering. So now, if the individual sin of the priest, they got to bring a young bull for a sin offering. Go ahead. And he shall bring the bullock unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation before the Lord. Go ahead. And shall lay his hand upon the bullock's head and kill the bullock before the Lord. And what's he going to do with the blood? Go ahead. And the priest that is anointed. Only shall, the anointed priest, the high priest that is anointed. Go ahead and read. Shall take up the bullock's blood and bring it to the tabernacle of the congregation. Go ahead. And the priest shall dip his finger in the blood and sprinkle of the blood seven times before the Lord, before the veil of the sanctuary. So he got to go to the sanctuary to go inside and go, bef go before the veil, dip his finger in the blood, and sprinkle it seven times. Yes. That's if the priest sin, or it's an individual sin. But what about the whole nation? Skip down to verse 13 and go ahead. And if the whole congregation of Israel sin through ignorance, and the thing be hid from the eyes of the assembly, and they have done somewhat against any of the commandments of the Lord concerning things which should not be done and are guilty. Uh -huh. When the sin which they have sinned against it is known, then the congregation shall offer a young bullock for the sin and bring him before the tabernacle of the congregation. Now skip down to verse 17. Do what with it? Go ahead. And the priest shall dip his finger in some of the blood and sprinkle it seven times before the Lord, even before the veil. Now skip down to verse 20. Why are you going to do that? Go ahead. And he shall do with the bullock as he did with the bullock for a sin offering. So shall he do with this 
and the priest shall make an atonement for them and it shall be forgiven them. So now the priest got to come in before the veil and take the bull's blood and sprinkle it seven times. Show me the veil here. But what happened when Jesus died on the cross? The veil, the veil ripped. ripped. Top to bottom. So when the veil ripped, then where was the priest going to sprinkle the blood? Nowhere. He didn't have no way to sprinkle it. And why seven times? Because God gave man seven days. And every day that man been on this planet, from the very first day he have sinned. Yes. So he had to cover him with his blood or kill him. So now, once the veil ripped, no place to sprinkle the blood. No place to sprinkle the blood. That was the end of animal sacrifice. Now let's go back to Hebrews, the 10th chapter. Back to Hebrews, the 10th chapter. Because sisters and brothers, the Lord had this laid out, and he wants you to know this. Because in the 10th verse, he said he made his soul an offering for sin. Yes. Well, he said his body. Isaiah said so. But we're going to start at 10 and 11. Verse, chapter 10 and verse 11. 10 and 11. 10 and 11. Okay, read it. And every priest standing daily and ministering, and offering offerings, the same sacrifices, uh -huh. which can never take away sins. Go ahead. But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins, forever sat down on the right hand of God. Now, once he made one sacrifice, forever he sat down on the right hand of God. Go ahead and read. From henceforth, expect until his enemies be made his footstool. Wait a minute. We read that already. Didn't the Lord say unto my Lord, sit down my, at my right hand until I make thy enemy thy foot's new? Yep. That took place after this. This is when that was fulfilled, after his death. Go ahead and read. For by one offering he hath perfected forever them that are sanctified. Go ahead. Wherefore, the Holy Ghost also is a witness to us, for after that he has said before, this is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, said the Lord. Uh -huh. I will put my laws into their hearts, and in their minds will I write them. See, that terminated the fringes, because he's going to put the laws <laughs> in your heart now, Teach. and write them in your mind. And you're going to have to look down at your fringes and remember to keep the command. Oh. But people don't understand that, and they think we are mean at the Israeli God because we don't let nobody wear no fringes up in here. If you're going to wear the fringes, you may as well kill the bullock. Right. Y'all understand? We don't do nothing for nothing. Go ahead and read. What verse, verse? We're at verse 17. Go ahead. And their sins and iniquities will I remember no more. Go ahead. Now where remission of these is, there is no more offering for sin. Well, remission of this is, now there's no more offering for sin. When that veil of the temple ripped, it was over with. Go ahead and read. Having therefore, brethren, Boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus, uh -huh. by a new and living way, which he has consecrated for us through the veil, that is to say, his flesh. Now, here's the veil. You understand? You don't pray to Jesus. You pray to the Father yes. in Jesus' name because yes. he is the high priest again. Make it plain. Y'all understand? So now, once you are that blood, didn't Moses say, stay in your houses till yeah. the next day don't come out? Right. I'm going to show you what will happen if you come out under the spiritual blood. Skip down to verse 26 and go ahead. For if we sin willfully after that we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifices for sins. Wait a minute. Why? Because he terminates the animal sacrifice, right? And he ain't going to die but one time for you, right? So the only person to die for your sin is you. So what do you have to look forward to? Go but, ahead and read. But a certain fearful looking for of judgment and fiery indignation which shall devour the adversaries. That is called the lake of fire. Now let's go quickly to Romans, the 10th chapter. Now we're going to read this and we're going to know what Lord was that was nailed to the cross. Romans 10, and we're going to start at verse 1. Romans 10 and verse 1. Okay, read it. Brethren, 
My heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. Go ahead. For I bear the record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. Now look, Paul is saying, you know, you look, we, you know, he wants that uh, we should be saved because we have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. There are more churches in our neighborhood than anybody's neighborhood. Right. But there ain't no knowledge in them. None. Lots of zeal, but no knowledge. Go ahead and read. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness uh -huh. and going about to establish their own righteousness have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. And they haven't to this day. So then they come up with their own uh, uh, brand for sin. Since you done got rid of the law, you say sin is smoking and drinking and dancing. Some preacher must have had a real... Shop thrift wife to spend all his money. He said, and going to the shopping mall. What? The biblical definition of sin is the transgression of the law. All right? But go ahead and read. Verse 4. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believes Now, y'all tell me what law did Christ in? The law of animal sacrifice. You read that with your own eyes, didn't you? Didn't know the Holy Ghost, whoops, the Holy Ghost just spoke to me and I told y'all that. We read it together. We read it. We read it. So now, we got this time Easter that they try to use on the hand to, to replace the Passover. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. And so they use Christ to try and establish Easter. They say, Christ died on Good Friday and rose Easter Sunday morning. Don't y'all know that Easter's coming up? Always here. So if you don't know no thing, you think that the Passover has been replaced by Easter. But then they say he died on Good Friday and rose Easter Sunday morning. How did they come up with that error? I'm going to show you how. Let's go into John, the 19th chapter. St. John, chapter 19. That's one thing about reading this book. You see people error, and you know how they come to error. You understand? You know why they made the mistakes they made. John chapter 19, St. John chapter 19. This is when Jesus was crucified. And we're going to start at verse 30. St. John chapter 19 and verse 30. 19 and 30. 19 and 30. Because when you see an error, you just can't say that's an error. You have to be able to show how, why, how they, why they made that error. That's why I tell some brothers years ago, they're out there preaching the gospel to the prostitutes. I'm running them off the street, running them off the street. I said, did you uh, check your sister and see if she had rent money or she had any children? No, man, she was, well, did you offer her something to replace what you was trying to take? Well, no, I said, then, where is your right to get out there and antagonize this woman? I'm not upholding prostitution, sister, brother. Don't get me wrong. But what I'm saying, if you're going to take something from somebody, be prepared to give them something. Make it plain. In exchange. Lord told you, serve me, and I'm going to give you your more time. 19 and 30. We're going to find out how this error came about. Go ahead and read. When Jesus, therefore, had received the vinegar, he said, it is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. Because they had to give, he had to, they had to give him vinegar before, before he died because prophecy said they gave him gall and vinegar for his drink. Yeah. And Jesus said, in order to make sure that everything was fulfilled, he said, I thirst. Right. And when he said that, they gave him vinegar. Then he said, it is finished. That's the prophecy, sister and brother. Then he bowed his head and he died. That's what he made. He gave up the ghost. Go ahead and read. The Jews, therefore, because it was the preparation that the body should not remain upon the cross on the Sabbath day, for that Sabbath day was a high day. Uh huh. Besought Pilate that their legs might be broken and that they might be taken away. So now, they didn't want him on the cross for the Sabbath day. Because well, that Sabbath day, sisters and brothers, was a high day. What was that high day? 
the first day of Feast of Unleavened Bread. But because the Gentiles didn't know about the seven Sabbath days that the Lord had, they say he died on Good Friday and he rose Easter Sunday morning. So let's go. I'm going to show you something now. I want you to put something on the screen. I'll see why now. If he died on Good Friday and he rose Easter Sunday morning, let's see how long he was in the grave. Would you put that up there? Give me that, that schedule there. Now, if he died on Good Friday and rose Easter morning, that means he died Friday. He was in there Friday night, Saturday night. In the daytime, he was in there Saturday. And you can't go to Sunday night. Can't do it. Because he's supposed to have been rose Sunday morning, right? Early. So now, if he died on Good Friday and rose Sunday morning, he was in the grave for what? <laughs> he was in the grave for two nights and one day, right? Two nights and one day. So let's go and see when the Lord's going to be cut off. Let's go into Daniel's ninth chapter. Daniel's ninth chapter. We're almost out of here. I can taste that bread wine now. <laughs> Daniel chapter 9. And we're going to start at verse 25. Daniel's 9 and verse 25. 9 and 25. Okay, go ahead. Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem until the Messiah, the prince, shall be seven weeks and three score and two weeks. The streets shall be built again and the wall even in troublous times. There was a king, a Persian king out of Xerxes. He gave, uh, 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 gave uh, 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 the Israelites a commandment to rebuild Jerusalem. Okay. They said from that time that that commandment was given until Messiah, that's until the anointing of Jesus, he gave a particular time. But we're not dealing with that today. But go ahead and read. 26. And after three score and two weeks shall Messiah be cut off. So when he come, he's going to be cut off. Go ahead. But not for himself. So who is Messiah? That's anointed one, ain't it? Or either the Christ. When he died, did he die for us? Or did he die for, for himself? For us. For us, but not for himself. Go ahead. And the people of the prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary, and the end thereof shall be with the flood, and until the end of the war, desolations are determined. So Titus destroyed Jerusalem to the ground. Those yes. are the creeping of the prince, the Romans. But this is what happened before they tore Jerusalem up. Go ahead and read. And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. This he that he going to confirm the covenant with many for one week is talking Jesus here. Go ahead and read. I'm sorry. And in the midst of the week, he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease. Now, how did he cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease? By dying. We read that, didn't we? Yes. When he died on the cross, the veil ripped from top to bottom. Yes. He calls the sacrifices and the oblation to cease in the midst of the week. Yes, sir. That's enough of that. Now let's go into Matthew, the 12th chapter, and see how long Jesus said he was going to be in the grave. Matthew chapter 12. And we're going to start reading at verse 38. Matthew chapter 12 and verse 38. Because these people was trying to find out are you really the Christ? And they wanted a sign. 12 and 38, read it. Then certain of the scribes and of the Pharisees answered, saying, Master, we will see a sign from thee. Uh -huh. But he answered and said unto them, An evil and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign. They said, look, we're going to see a, a sign of thee. But just let me just take a break right now. I want uh, one of the ushers, one of the elders, go out there and get the bread and the wine. And make sure that these sisters take it on the way out, okay? Because that is a must. The sun's down, right? That is a must. They got to take that. Okay, now, say it, let's start back at the top of the verse. Go ahead. 38 again. I'm going to start at 38. I'm 39. But he answered and said unto them, An evil and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign, and now, there shall no sign be given to it. 
but the sign of the prophet Jonas. Now they wanted a sign, but he said, evil and adulterous generation seeketh out the sign. That means that they can't just believe the word, they have to see something dramatic, you know, like speaking in tongues. Don't you know that it is written that speaking in tongues are for non believers? Non believers. Prophecy is for believers. Yes. So he said, but I ain't going to give you but one sign. That's the sign of Jonah the prophet. Go ahead and read. For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the whale's belly, uh -huh. so shall the son of man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. So if Jonah was in the belly of the whale for three days and three nights, so shall the son of man be in the heart of the earth for three days and three nights. That means he's going to be in his grave for three days and three nights. And Daniel said he was going to be cut off in the middle of the week, didn't he? Now, what's the middle of the week? Wednesday. Wednesday. Now, put the sign up there. And let's see if the Bible is different from what the Gentiles is taught. Now, we look it up here. He's going to be in the grave for three days and three nights. They killed Jesus in the middle of the week. The middle of the week is Wednesday. Right. So he was in there Wednesday night. Right. Thursday night. Right. Friday night. Right. Thursday in the daytime. Right. Friday in the daytime. Yeah. And Saturday in the daytime. Days, he rose Saturday nights. evening just before sundown. Make it plain. He was in there three days and three nights. But that confirmed other prophecy. What is that, Brother Boy? God said he gave man seven days. After the seventh day, man ain't going to be man no more. He's going to be God. And Jesus is the forerunner. Show you what I'm talking about. Let's go into St. John, the 20th chapter. St. John, chapter 20. So you understand why we keep this Passover. Let you know you got a great big reward coming. Man did not know that God is creating God. That's what he creates you to be. But it's hard to wrap your mind around that when your mind has been watered down by a Sunday preacher. Brother Boy, you shouldn't say you're right. I got to stop saying that. <coughs> St. John 20. This is after Jesus was crucified and, and put in the grave. St. John 20. And the women went there to see him. Go ahead and read. 20 the, and 1. St. John 20. And verse 1, go ahead. The first day of the week, coming Mary Magdalene, early, when it was yet dark, unto now, the sepulcher. Now and, look, didn't it say Jesus rose on Easter Sunday? What day is the first day of the week? Sunday. Sunday, right? Right. So they came to the sepulcher early, while it was yet dark. So y'all might not know yet. You know, that's the old <laughs> English. So I'm going to bring it in modern English. It was still dark. Still dark. Go ahead and read. <laughs> guess. Uh, Come on, Julius. We got to get out of this lesson okay. now. Okay. Okay. The first day of the week coming Mary Magdalene early when it was yet dark unto the sepulcher and see the stone taken away from the sepulcher. Go ahead. Then she ran it and coming to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved and said unto them, they have taken away the Lord out of the sepulcher and we know not where they have laid him. Now, so when they got there, he was gone, wasn't it? Yeah. We know he was gone. When did he leave? On the Saturday, the seventh day, just before the sundown. Before sundown. And he was in there, like he said, for three days and three nights to prove that he was the Christ. If he, rolled, if he died on Friday and rose Sunday, then we are still waiting for the Christ. Because there was a sign that he was here. Right. But he... Told you. And every year, the preacher's still preaching the same thing. You know, we celebrate Easter because Christ rose on Easter Sunday morning, and we celebrate in the Christmas Sunday, Sunday is the Christian Sabbath day because Christ rose on Sunday. He didn't rise. Y'all just read that, didn't he? He didn't rise on Sunday. So what about Easter? Pagan. Pagan. What about Sunday? Pagan. Pagan. Why do they call it Sunday? Because it's the day of the soul. It's the day of the sun. The day of the sun worship us. So on Easter Sunday morning, when they get up early <laughs> and go out to sunrise service, yeah. what sun are they worshiping that's rising? The sun that's The orb that's in the sky, not the Thank sun you, of God. Right. 
But people get mad when you tell them that. But that is the way it is, sisters and brothers. So now, we're going to take this Passover, but there's a few things in the Passover with a condition that you can't have. And let's show you where it is. Let's go into Exodus, the 12th chapter. Exodus, the 12th chapter. I just got three more little short scriptures after this, and we're going to go get that bread and wine. Exodus chapter 12. I remember one time I had, I had a sister, had a grandmother watching me on the YouTube. And she said, when I said, the old ladies go out on Easter Sunday morning and get up early for sunrise service with the white dresses on. Yeah. <laughs> so she got upset and walked out the room, <laughs> her grandmama. I said, I got to stop doing stuff like that. It's the truth. It's but you do stuff like that when you enjoy what you're doing. Exodus 12, we're going to start at verse 43. This is the ordinance of the Passover, sisters and brothers. Exodus 12 and 43. Okay, read it. And the Lord said unto Moses and Aaron, this is the ordinance of the Passover. Uh huh. There shall no stranger eat thereof. Go ahead. But every man's servant that is bought for money, when thou hast circumcised him, then shall he eat thereof. So now, no stranger, not only stranger, anybody, you can't take part in the Passover. Skip down to verse 48. Uh, people ask me, well, do you, uh, if you ain't baptized, can you take the Passover? I said, I don't see nothing where it says you can't. It only tells, I only enforces what I can read. You understand? Skip down to verse 48 and go ahead. And when a stranger shall sojourn with thee and will keep the Passover to the Lord, let all his males be circumcised, then let him come near and keep it, and he shall be as one that is born in the land. For no uncircumcised person shall eat thereof. Now, he said, if a stranger will come, that's a non-Israelite, and keep the Passover with you, then he got to be circumcised. That's too. right. Because no uncircumcised man should take part in the Passover. Go ahead and read. What law shall be to him that is a homeboy and unto the stranger that sojourn among you? And one law shall be to him that's homeborn, which is Israel, and anybody that's among you that's not Israel. Israel. One law. Well, you see, I brought this bright, this white guy with me, and I want him to take the Passover. I said, is he circumcised? Well, no, well, he can't take the Passover. My well, brother, boy, that's talking about them old laws down in Egypt. Do you really know who the Passover is? You finna find out right now. You know I'm going to tell you, don't you? Let's go into 1 Corinthians, the 5th chapter. 1 Corinthians, the 5th chapter. Because, sisters and brothers, the Lord tells you to search the Scripture. He's in them. You think you have eternal life. Yes. Though they are they that testify of me. Yes. 1 Corinthians 5, we're going to read one verse, verse 7. 1 Corinthians 5 and verse 7. 1 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 7. Read it. Purge out therefore the old leaven uh -huh. that you may be a new lump. And leaven represents sin. So purge out the old leaven that you might be a new lump. Go ahead. As you are unleavened. As you are unleavened. For even Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. For even Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. So who is the Passover? Jesus. Let's go into Galatians, the third chapter, and start at verse 26. Galatians 3 and 26. So Jesus, the Passover, that's what that lamb represent, sisters and brothers. God don't do nothing on the physical side unless he have a, a spiritual Meaning, you got to learn that because God is about life, eternal life. Yes. And what he going to teach you is going to get you eternal life. Galatians 3 and verse 26, because I will not baptize an uncircumcised person either. You understand? 
Because when you're baptized, you are partaking of the Passover. Because Christ is our Passover. Verse 26. Go ahead and read it. For you are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. So we're all. How many is all? Go ahead and read. For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ, Go ahead. have put on Christ. For as many of you have been baptized into Christ, that's when you go on that water, right. you have put on Christ. Go ahead and read. There's neither Jew nor Greek. There's neither Jew nor Greek. There's neither bond nor free. There's neither bond nor free. There's neither male nor female. There's neither male nor female. Go ahead and read. For you are all one in Christ Jesus. For you are all one in Christ Jesus. Go ahead and read. And if you be Christ, and if you be Christ, then are you Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. That's when you become Abraham's seed and heir according to the promise. And I just got to show you the covenant that God made with Abraham. This is the last place. Let's go into Genesis, the 17th chapter. Genesis chapter 17. Hey, sister and brother, we don't tell you nothing that the Lord don't tell you. That's why we tell people friendship is not your culture. Never. Friendship was added because of sin, just like death was and like animal sacrifice was. Anything was added and wasn't there in the beginning that God, divest, God divest himself of it. Genesis chapter 17. And we're going to start at verse 1. This is the last place. Genesis 17. And verse 1. Okay, go ahead. And when Abram was 90 years old and nine, uh -huh. the Lord appeared to Abram and said unto him, I am the almighty God. Walk before me and be thou perfect. Go ahead. And I will make my covenant between me and thee and will multiply thee exceedingly. Go ahead. And Abram fell on his face and God talked with him saying, Go ahead. As for me, behold, my covenant is with thee. And thou shalt be a father of many nations. So he's the father called also not only father of Israel and Ishmael and all this. He's the father of the faithful sisters and brothers. Yes. That's why you're going to be a father of many nations. So he changed his name. Go ahead and read. Neither shall thy name anymore be called Abram. Go ahead. But thy name shall be Abraham. Go ahead. For a father of many nations have I made thee. He said, so I'm going to change your name to Abraham because Ham means many. Because I have made you the father of many nations. Go ahead. And I will make thee exceedingly fruitful. Go ahead. And I will make nations of thee and kings shall come out of thee. Go ahead. And I will establish my covenant between me and thee and thy seed after thee and their generations for an everlasting covenant. He said, now I'm going to make my covenant between me and your seed and all their generations. He said, your seed. Did we read if you be Abraham's seed and have the corn to the covenant? So let's see what his seed is supposed to do. This is the covenant inside of the covenant. Skip down to verse 9. Verse 9 and go ahead. And God said unto Abraham, Thou shalt keep my covenant therefore, thou and thy seed after thee in their generations. Uh huh. This is my covenant which you shall keep between me and you and thy seed after thee. Go ahead. Every man child among you shall be circumcised. Uh huh. And you shall circumcise the flesh of your foreskin. Uh huh. And it shall be a token of the covenant. Between me and you. Every man child. Just like the blood was a token and kept Israel alive, the circumcision is the same thing with male. Go ahead and read. And you shall circumcise the flesh of your foreskin. Uh huh. And it shall be a token of the covenant between me and you. And he that is eight days old shall be circumcised among you. That's what we're supposed to do it, but old guys like me that found out later on, we got it done <laughs> just like Abraham got did it done. when he was old. Go ahead and read. Every man child in your generations, he that is born in the house or bought with money of any stranger, which is not of thy seed. What do you mean bought with money? If you buy something with money, you own it, don't you? Right. So this is represents you are bought with the blood of Jesus. Because if you are Christ, then whose seed are you? Abraham. Go ahead and read. He that is born in thy house and he that is bought with thy money must needs be circumcised. Those are two strong words, ain't it? Must. That means there ain't no getting around it. No getting around it. Need. 
That means there ain't no getting around it. Ain't that correct? It ain't no accident that he have it. Must need, must need be circumcised. Go ahead and read. And my covenant shall be in your flesh for an everlasting covenant. Go ahead. And the uncircumcised man, child, whose flesh of his foreskin is not circumcised, that soul shall be cut off from his people. He has broken my covenant. Cut off mean lake of fire, sister and brother. So when I tell people, you must be circumcised, you're going to tell me what Paul said. I said, who's greater, Paul or God? Paul, that's simple. So that's why... It says, if you're going to partake of the Passover, you must be circumcised. So any brother here that's not circumcised, please don't go and put that bread and wine in your mouth because you're bringing a curse upon yourself. So I thank you for your time. Our Father, which art in heaven. Our Father, which art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Thy will be done. In earth. In earth. As it is in heaven. As it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us of our debts. And forgive us of our debts. As we forgive our debtors. As we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation. And lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil. But deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom. For thine is the kingdom. And the power. And the power. And the glory. And the glory. Forever. Forever. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord God of Israel. Praise the Lord God of Israel. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Enjoy the bread and wine.